Hi, welcome to a fine night in the Philippines. A late night um, chat. It's 11 o'clock here. Uh, just looking through on YouTube, there's so much information now, and so much of it is hinging on what is happening in America. It's not just about America. That's the uh, that's the thing that strikes me. It's not just about America. What's happening is now is that we are losing the quality of life which we have always thought was absolutely inalienable as a right and we're losing it and it's happened so very very quickly. In just the course of a few months we lost the right to go to church and sit next to someone in the congregation. We lost the right to gather in any more groups, more than ten. In certain areas we lost the right to travel from one place to another. And definitely we've lost, we've lost the right now to travel from one country to another. So what's happening is that we are being separated from our fellows. We are not allowed to, if you think about it, we've lost so many of those things that we used to take for granted, that, that we cherished. Shaking hands with a friend, hugging someone that you haven't seen for a long time. All of these things are now being disappeared into what's being called the old normal. And we're being asked to welcome the new normal. Now the new normal also also includes snitching on our neighbour. If we see that he's doing something which is against the regulations, we're supposed to get the police on him. This is the worst kind of censorship of what we think, say and do. It's the worst kind of regulation and we've already given up to it. Now, this is not a fight that we can allow other people to fight for us. We can't do that. I've seen lots of people on Facebook who have declared that they don't want to hear from anybody who wants to talk about the situation, the lockdown, the quarantine, whether you wear a mask or whether you don't. They don't want to hear any of this. They, they want to continue in, in thinking that everything is okay. Whereas actually, it's far from okay. Practically all of the media now is censoring what we say. And actually, it's guiding what we are supposed to think. I posted, in fact, I shared something, which was information about wearing masks. I made a point for myself about the wearing of masks and what I think is an underlying agenda. And the underlying agenda is still there. But I was <laughs> I was admonished by a couple, a couple of people who are my subscribers. And they said that my post was irresponsible. So I think about this. I put forward my viewpoint and I was declared irresponsible. Now, there is so much that seems to be going unchallenged. Didn't we go a little while back, didn't we go where all that was on the media was about riots and we watched in horror, even though I live in isolation, in peaceful isolation, high in the mountains of Burgos, and we, we don't see any animosity between us and our neighbours and we don't, 
We don't look at them with the intention of seeing if there's anything that we could snitch on them for. So we are very, very fortunate. But when I watched in horror as I watched America burning, um, even though I left America to come and live in the Philippines, this, this is the place that I choose to find my home. And I've worked all my life and I feel that I have the right to do that. So it's not a question of, of turning my back on America or turning my back on the UK, which is where I was born. What it means is that all of this is happening, all that was happening that we were, have, that we were being overwhelmed with is now has now dropped so now now we're we're talking only about the coronavirus and we are not allowed to speak against no we're not allowed to people are people are telling me that they put up posts which have been deleted which have been taken down by facebook Posts are being taken down by the other social media um, and it's all happening out in the open. How, how can it be right that, that a private individual by virtue of owning a large social media group, company, service, how can it be right that that one man can censor a commercial put up by the president of the most powerful country in the world? Now, let me tell you, if you've never been to America, it, I'm going to wonder, I'm going to wander about here, you'll have to excuse it, but thoughts occur to me um, that in my life I've seen a lot I've traveled to many many countries there is only one country in the world where you can go and you can live a law-abiding life where you can just work go to work come home buy a house get married have children send them to school watch them grow and do all of those normal things and you can claim citizenship of that country the United States of America there is no other country in the world where you can do that and stand up and call yourself an American and be accepted. I love, I love the Philippines. I love the Filipino people. I love the culture. I battle with the differences between the way that I would think and the way that uh, my fellow Filipino thinks. I struggle with all of that. But I love the Philippines and I love my life here. I joke and say that it didn't take me too long to find my mission. I found my mission to help. I met, I met Beth. We lived on uh, Cebu for a while, and then we came and lived in Bohol. And we came and lived with Beth's mom. We have land here. Beth has an inheritance. She is, she is, the inheritor of. A large piece of the land here and we built our home we built a house we've done all of those things and we're very happy and we have a charity which we have fought very hard to establish and to run and we are very very close to completing all aspects of paperwork on that which is no small thing but I can't call myself 
ever a Filipino. But as English as I sound when I speak, I can call myself an American if I so wish. I still feel, God damn it, I still feel British. And I think I always will. I think I'll always sound like somebody that comes from Manchester. But I went to America and I worked hard. I went as a single parent and I didn't have an easy time, believe me. But I worked hard and I, I paid my dues and I had a good life. Now, when my kid grew up and he went off to have his own life, he's got his own adventures to do, he went and lived in another city thousands of miles away. I spoke to him before I came here and I said, I feel I'm not finished. I need to start a new, I need to turn over a new page of my life, a new adventure. He said, go for it. And he lives over there and I live here. And he's only one of my children. Now, nowhere else can you do that. You can, you can come to America. You can, you can come to the Philippines. You can go to, you can go to the UK. You can go to almost any country in the world and live there, live there peacefully. And it may be that you may be able to take citizenship. But you will have to pass your citizenship on to your child for him or her to be able to declare themselves a Brit or, I don't know, a German or an Italian. or You yourself, going to that country as an adult, I doubt will be able to say, I am... You can't stand up with a Manchester accent and say I'm a German or I'm a Chinese. Uh, I've got my citizenship to prove it and here's my passport. You can't do that. But you can do that in America. So America is an enormously important country for not just this reason, but for many reasons. It, People have dreamed of going to America, myself included, almost all their lives. Some never ever make it to America. But it is this incredibly special place. And to sit here and watch, not on television because it wasn't really showed too much on television, but certainly it was being posted all the time. On YouTube and I watched I watched America burn I watched the different cities burn I watched how they the people that are dissatisfied with the way that things are being burning the flag uh, destroying the history the history that is marked good and bad with monuments to various people that were iconic at the time and whose, uh, whose ethics or uh, views we may not actually agree with right now, but they were, they were instrumental, they were part of a particular place in history of America. And that's it, isn't it? You know, in Australia, people, the Brits, um, not known for good behaviour all through their history, believe me, the Brits peopled Australia to a large degree by taking people prisoners for the most trivial things and shipping them out to populate Australia. Now, the same thing happened in America to a degree, but they were taken as slaves, were they not? And now, people 
in Australia, people celebrate if their heritage can be traced back to being someone who was shipped out there as a criminal because the people that were shipped out there were shipped out there because they could be uh, not always because they had done anything wrong and some were shipped out as children for stealing an apple <laughs> the, uh, the stories would be terrible to relate but they have a sense of history and, and pride as to the way that things have evolved it's going through a rough time right now and that's also part of the issue that I see is unfolding which we're not going to be able to continue to ignore it, it's not going away and I notice that I see that Denmark Denmark recently tried to, well they actually did legislate and make it law that a vaccine for COVID-19 would be mandatory. In other words, you better queue up or they'll come and get you and they'll give you that vaccine whether you want it or not, which is against the rules following the, the Second World War. Second World War they created, I think it was at the Nuremberg trials, they created a situation where they would say you are a sovereign person. Your body is sovereign. So no one can come up and tell you that you must take a certain kind of medication, which is what a vaccine is. Now, in Denmark, the outrage at this was so great the demonstrations were so great that apparently they had to take the law down. Now, if you if you are thinking that I'm just an out and out anti-vaxxer, that's the names that we that people who disagree with things anti this phobic that uh, we get labelled. Any one of us, depending on what your particular dislike is, and we get labelled with that. What I would like to see people do is do their own research. And if you do your own research into this vaccine, the latest piece of information that I saw on YouTube, which you can go and find out on Facebook, you can find this out for yourself. I urge you to do that, is I think the RNA aspect of any vaccine that's being turned out right now and apparently Pfizer have admitted that the product that they are putting into the vaccine has to be stored right or wrong no doubt you who are who are not believing anything that I say will go and fact, fact check the facts do that do that but don't trust everything that is told for you. Have a look at the evidence that is being presented. And you cannot, I've had people just discount anything. No, you've got to, th tell, me the, tell me the science. Where's, where's the science? Well, as somebody else I saw, another friend of mine, Tom, told somebody else, hey, I'm not your babysitter. This is your life. You go and do your own research. And that's what we should all be doing. Because right now it seems it's no conspiracy theory to say that locking down completely is like taking the country by the throat. Because people are dying. In places where the social services, social care, the, the government is unable to front up money to keep everybody alive, people are dying. People, uh, aged people who are actually deciding that they have little
to live for if they are to be locked down without end in sight and they're committing suicide. So suicide statistically is up. It's increased a great deal. What we owe it to ourselves to do is to not not take anybody's word for it but to find out how many different sources are beginning to say the same thing and without doubt in my mind it's beginning it's clear that there's an underlying agenda which is not for our own good not for you and me who I don't have unlimited resources to be able to live through a, a permanent lockdown. You know, I don't think that China is locked down right now. And yet, they're not all dying off. Now, I always remember the, the example when you're trying to make a decision and you don't know what the information is, how do you make a decision? How do you assess the, the situation? Very, very difficult. Think of it this way. If you had a calculator and something had gone slightly wrong in that calculator and it, it was holding down a number, choose a number, one to nine, choose a number. It was holding down, say, one. And into every calculation, every calculation that you did, a secret one came in. And then you get your answer. And you say, well, this is the answer. And you believe it. If anybody says, well, are you sure that that's... Well, I do. Look, here's my calculator. This is an expensive calculator. So you make a decision and it's based on figures which are not correct. Now, the accusations are many-fold about how the figures all the time are being cooked. If a doctor is paid for reporting a death of a certain disease and he has one disease and he gets $600 for it and another disease where he gets thousands of dollars and it's person's dead what's the difference? It's going to go with the money or most are and they're being pressured to do that. Is this true? What my friend Tom says, I'm not your babysitter. Go find out for yourself. But at least don't disbelieve everything. Someone that I sent, I sent something to, he sent back a comment. He said, I read it. I'm not intelligent enough to understand this. And I said to him, watch it again. And he said, I don't think so. No, I won't. In other words, because it got a little bit difficult, he's given up. And now I see a post from someone who is saying that Biden has has got more votes than anybody in the history of the universe it seems he never he never campaigned he didn't draw any crowds and suddenly he's got more votes than anybody something uh, so I think uh, Mr. Water said something doesn't seem quite right 
But as far as the lockdown goes, isn't it, isn't it clearly a case of a cure that is killing more people than the disease, is how it seems to me. Forgive me for the meander, um, kind of gotten out of that just of late. There's a foreigner in the Philippines, bye for now.